Hello people of the internet today! I am so excited because I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Horadam Aquarelle Schmincke Professional Watercolors. This is the 36 half pan set and this is actually my very first professional slash artist grade quality watercolors. Previously I was using Windsor & Newton Cotman, which are student grade, so I am so excited to get into these. Now before we start, I just want to say that there are many different professional grade watercolors and I have never used these before, so I'm not personally recommending them or anything. But if you are interested in purchasing them, I would recommend that if you're American, try to buy them from a European based company. And the reason for that is because Americans don't need to pay the VAT tax, which means that European companies can actually charge less for Americans because they don't need to increase the cost to pay the tax to the government. So just as an example, this exact set, if you were to go on Dick Blix and order it, it would cost around $300. But on Jackson's Art, which is where I got mine, I only ended up paying about $180. So you can see that there's a huge difference in the cost just by buying from a European company. Now that we got that out of the way, let's actually open up this box and see what's inside. So the watercolors themselves come in this large black tin, and it just has the Schmincke logo in the bottom left corner. This tin has two flaps, so the one that I just flipped up has four large wells that you can use for mixing paints. And the lower flap, which I'm going to open up in a second here, has ten smaller wells and a large flat area. The set also comes with this pamphlet pre-printed on watercolor paper. And it's really nice because it has all of the different colors in order of the set, so you don't have to make your own color chart, which I think is a nice touch and it saves you some time. I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better, and you can see that there are four rows. Three of them are filled, and each row holds 12, so that makes 36 different paints. The bottom one's empty, so you can actually add up to 12 more half pans of whatever colors you'd like. Each of the half pans are held in by a flexible metal tab, which to be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of. You'll see later when I try to unwrap all of them that it's difficult to get all the pans to stay in place. Clearly, I'm either not strong enough to flex them back over or I'm doing something wrong. So I'm going to have to go back in and figure out what to do about them because they're all a little wiggly right now. I do, however, like that each of the half pans have this outer wrapper that has all of the color information on it. This makes it really easy to document all the colors or turn them into a new color chart. I was kind of dreading needing to open up all of these individually wrapped colors, but they actually open really nicely and it's not too long of a process. I'm just going to play some music as I open up the rest of the pans and I'll jump back in once everything is opened and ready to go.
So here are our 36 half pans and I gotta say each of these pans are very consistent. They are definitely filled to the brim. It's completely flush with the edges of the pan and the surface is also very very smooth. So just as a comparison here's the Windsor & Newton cotton set and you can see that the edges of the pan go in. It's almost like little pellets in the pans themselves. These however go all the way to the edges and the pan is completely filled to the brim. Now the moment that I've been waiting for, we're going to actually test out these colors and see how they look on paper. So I have the color chart pamphlet that came with the watercolors themselves and I'm just going to go ahead and start swashing them out. Now I do have just one little disclaimer before we start. As you're watching me fill out this color chart, keep in mind that I was not all that consistent with filling out the colors from the absolute darkest to the absolute lightest. I was more focused on just getting my first impressions and playing around, so some colors I dipped in the pan once, sometimes I dipped them in twice to get an even more vibrant color. So as far as an accurate chart of the extreme spectrums of how dark and bright a color can get to how light and diluted a color can get, this is probably not the best representation. But I still think I do a decent job and you can actually get a lot of information about how dark they can go by watching the initial color as it's applied to the page and seeing how it gets lighter as I add more water. These first two yellows were extremely, extremely vivid, bright, and easy to activate. And you'll see on the third color, I'm going to zoom in and you'll get a much closer look at the actual paint as it's applied to the page. The first yellow that I applied, by the way, was lemon yellow, and this one here is cadmium yellow light, which has slightly warmer undertones. Next we have translucent yellow, which actually was more of a gold. You'll see right here as I add more to the upper right corner that it definitely was gold, and then as you added more water it turned into a yellow. So this was definitely one of the ones that I should have dipped my brush in the pan more than once, but gosh darn it, I didn't. And I'm just zooming in here so you'll have a much better view of the initial color as it goes on the page. This next color is Chrome Yellow Deep, which I would describe as a yellow orange. And once it dries, it gets a little more on the yellow side, coming to the color of about an apricot. Chrome Orange is just a nice standard orange that still has a bit of yellow in it. The next color is going to be your basic bright orange, so this is a nice happy medium between 213 and 218. Translucent orange, as I just said, is definitely what I would consider orange. Not much to say about it, it's just a really nice vivid orange color. Cadmium red light is definitely a red. It's really pretty. Um, it does have a slightly orange undertone compared to the next red that we'll be seeing. So this one is a beautiful red, but 363 scarlet red is what I would consider your true fire truck red. Which was actually the worst case of me only dipping my brush in once. You can see right here that I dilute it so much that it just turns into actually like a raspberry pink color because scarlet red does have slightly pink undertones when you dilute it. So I'm going to insert the clip here of the finished um, color chart when I realized how poorly of a job I did on that color. And I'm just going to go back in with some highly concentrated scarlet red and you can see that indeed this is a fire truck red. This is your standard nice red color. 
Number 366 is Deep Red, which is a nice dark red, which as you dilute it turns more into a maroon color. Permanent Carmen is a pink color, which stays more on the red side than the purple side as far as pinks go. So I think it's just a really pretty pink color. Magenta, on the other hand, is once again a nice pink color, but it does have a little more of the purple side. And I feel like this is the pink I'm more used to seeing in standard pink kits, so I think I prefer the 353 as a pink in my opinion just because it's a little different than I'm used to seeing. Manganese Violet is the last color here on the first row, and it was actually really difficult to re-wet compared to all of the other colors. But it's a beautiful hue, and I love the way it looks. It's a nice, solid purple. Starting the second row, we have Ultramarine Violet, which I guess looking at it now, it does look violet. When I first put it on the page, I was convinced it was a blue, and that Manganese Violet was the only purple that you get. But this Ultramarine Violet is indeed a violet. Next up, we have Delft Blue, which is a gorgeous muted blue, in my opinion. It is less intense than many other bright blues that you get in painting kits, so it's almost like a denim color. Now, Indigo was an interesting color. It was way darker than I was anticipating, and it's very um, muted as well, almost gray even. Like, the Delft Blue, you definitely can tell it's a blue. This Indigo... I don't even know how to describe it. It's definitely very gray. Ultramarine Finest is your basic ultramarine blue. This is the blue that I'm used to getting in any sort of painting or art kit. And you can see what I mean in comparison now of your basic blue versus the Delft blue, which is more muted and denim in color. I also want to note that as far as blues go, Ultramarine Finest, Delft Blue, and Indigo even have a slightly purple undertone compared to the following blues that we'll be seeing. For example, Mountain Blue right here does not have any purple undertones. It doesn't have any green undertones either. It is what I would consider a very basic middle blue color. Prussian Blue is actually really interesting because as I apply it to the page in the video, it looks like there's a bit of green in it. but there's definitely no green in this color in real life. It's actually really, really similar to Mountain Blue. The only real difference that I can pick out is that Prussian Blue is able to get a lot darker and a lot more intense. Mountain Blue, on the other hand, seems like it's Prussian Blue, but with white added to it. So even when you get a lot of pigment on your brush for Mountain Blue, it'll never get as dark and as intense as Prussian Blue. Take note at the end of the video when I have the finished painting swatches and you'll be able to see that Prussian Blue and Mountain Blue are actually really similar. Cerulean Blue Tone is once again really similar to Prussian Blue and Mountain Blue in terms of hue. However, Cerulean Blue Tone definitely is super vivid and super bright. Way brighter than Prussian Blue and Mountain Blue could ever get. As an alternative to Ultramarine Finest as your blue choice, I could see Cerulean Blue working equally as well. Helio Turquoise, as the name suggests, is where greens are starting to be introduced. This is still very much on the blue side in my opinion, but you can definitely tell that there's a little green in it, turning it into a very bright, very gorgeous turquoise color. Prussian Green has a little more green added to it, but still has a fair amount of blue. It's almost like a dusty teal color because it is muted and not very highly saturated. Thalo green is green enough to be considered a green in my opinion, and the very light shades almost have a highlighter type effect and appear to be glowing. However, the more pigment that you add and the darker that it gets, the more it turns into a nice green with some blue undertones. Next up is May Green, and this removes any of the blue undertones that may have been there in Thalo Green. In fact, May Green even leans a little bit on the yellow side. I didn't even push this as dark as it could go, so I would say this is your standard bright green color. Cobalt Green Dark will finish up the second row, and it's just a nice standard dark green that is slightly on the muted side. 
The third row starts with our last green color, which is permanent green olive, which is a nice dark green that is more saturated than the previous one. So if you're looking for a dark green color, I would suggest this one over the other. 525 is olive green yellowish, and that's honestly exactly how I would describe it anyways. Um, it's olive green, but it's a little yellowish, and overall it's a really interesting color and I like it. Brilliant Yellow Dark is a really interesting yellow because it's much less saturated than any of the other yellows that I typically use. So it'll be interesting to see how it changes the colors that are mixed from it. And to be honest, Naples Yellow here is almost identical to Brilliant Yellow Dark, except it's slightly more on the orangey brown side. Yellow Ochre is your standard yellow ochre. Nothing much to say about it. It's just a really nice, bright yellow ochre color. Next up is Burnt Sienna. And once again, just kind of your standard Burnt Sienna color. It's nice and bright and vivid, and I like it. Number 670 is Matter Brown, and it's very similar to Burnt Sienna, but you can tell that there's a bit more red in it. Venetian Red is similar to Matter Brown, but more intense and saturated. So similar to the blues that I was describing above, Venetian Red is similar to Matter Brown, but more intense, dark, and vivid. Indian Red is the first color that I would distinctly describe as a brown. It has slightly purple undertones to it, but it definitely looks brown to me. Burnt Umber is your real brown though. This is what I would consider your basic standard brown. It's a really nice shade, it has both beautiful looking dark values and lights, and overall it's just really nice. Now sepia brown was really interesting because when I first put it on the page, it almost looks black or gray, um, but it's actually just a very, very unsaturated brown to the point of looking gray. You'll see here in a second that it's only after I start to add the ivory black to the page that you can even tell that sepia brown is actually just a really dark, warm brown color. And of course, ivory black is your standard black. And there we have it. There are all the 36 different colors in the Schminke half pan sets of the Horadam Aquawell watercolors. Even though my chart wasn't quite perfect and that I didn't have a smooth gradient between the highly concentrated and the highly dilute versions of each color, I hope that you still found the video helpful and that my descriptions were good enough that you could still get a sense of what each of the colors were and how they compared to those around them. Also, I just wanted to say that I am generally a pencil or dry media artist, so I'm relatively new to painting and pigments, so I'm sorry if I mispronounced anything or interpreted any particular color wrong. If you do find any mistakes, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to fix it. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to giving these paints a try and using them on a more regular basis and actually making a proper color chart in the weeks to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.